Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm JT and we are here in Adobe Lightroom and we're taking a look at some of the photos I have taken in Ireland and around the UK. And most of these, it looks like they're in Dublin and I've done some kind of cool toning to these that I really like. I call them my Hogwarts tone inspired by the Harry Potter movies. Hopefully I don't catch any copyright flack for that, but I just thought these kind of dark, moody, grungy tones looked pretty cool and I wanted to share them with you guys and share how I edited these photos. So one of my favorites over here is this old kind of church parish, and I believe this is from sometime between the 12th and 15th century, and this is kind of located out in the middle of nowhere in the Irish countryside. So let's go ahead, let's open up this photo. We're gonna hit develop. Here's the photo that we have of the remains of this parish in this graveyard. And here's the before photo. And here's the after. You can see there's a massive difference. I really like the way this turned out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click. We're going to create a virtual copy. And now what we're gonna do is reset all of our settings. So we'll go to settings, reset all settings. And now we are here with our beginning image. And before we get started, I just wanna show you guys a little Lightroom trick. If you go over to the right hand side, you can see my calibration tab is up on the top. Most people have this on the bottom and you can actually edit the order of all of these tabs. You can remove tabs, add tabs just by right clicking and hitting customize develop panel. And you can see here, we can reorder our tabs. I've taken my calibration and put it at the top. And you can also turn off the tabs that you don't use. For example, if you absolutely hate the tone curve, you can turn off the tone curve if you never want to use it again. Or if you hate the vignette and grain effects, just turn those off and you can hit save. You can also go back to the default order if you don't like what you did. But I like the way I have things set up here. It works, as you can see in some of my other Lightroom editing videos. There's a reason why I have this calibration tab at the top. But for now, let's hit cancel. Just something I kind of wanted to show you guys. And let's get started editing this photo. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop. I think there's a little needless sky on top and some needless ground over here. And I just want to crop in a little bit to say an 8x10, I think somewhere... Somewhere around there looks good. We just had a little bit too much sky and I wanted to kind of punch into these details here. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and start by opening our calibration tab and I'm going to take our shadows. I'm gonna bring them towards the green over here. If you remember the Harry Potter movies, they have this kind of bluish green tone, especially in the last few movies and move our reds from pink to orange. You'll see this a lot more in the indoor images when we copy and paste this on our indoor images and then turn this saturation down quite a bit. I think that looks good. And then take our greens and we're going to move those over towards green. If you take a look at the grass right now, we're taking our greens away from the yellow. It was quite yellow and we're moving them towards a very saturated green. And I think somewhere around 35, 40 looks pretty good. And then take our blues and move those over towards cyan. About negative 29 looks pretty good. And we will, yeah, let's add a little bit of color in our blues. That will add some color up in the sky later. And we can click this eyeball and see the before and the after. Very subtle. That is mostly just in the grass right now. But again, as we edit, you will see some more of these calibration tones start to come out in the sky and the bricks. And again, that's why I like doing calibration first, and then I can move into my toning and you will see some of those cool colors pop out towards the end. So next I'm going to use the landscape profile. You can see that flattens out our overcast sky, gives us a little more saturation down here in the grass and in the bricks. And then I'm going to cool down our color balance just a touch. You don't want to overkill. You don't want to do too much. And I'm going to also add those greens like we mentioned before, just a little bit. You don't want to go overkill right now. We will see a lot of this color pop out when we start darkening up this image. So now we're going to go down to our exposure 
and turn down the exposure of our image. And now you can start to see all of these blues and the clouds pop out at about minus 1.5 ish, 1.4, that looks good. I'm gonna turn up our contrast just a touch. Again, not too much right now. We can always come back and edit a little bit more if we need it, that's okay. And then we're gonna bring our highlights down and you can start to see that all of that change up here in the sky. We don't wanna do this too much. Somewhere around negative 50 looks about right. And then we'll bring up our shadows and you can see this is affecting everything going on here in the middle of the image in our midtones and shadows. Again, you don't wanna crank this too high. That's almost pushing it around 70. We're gonna bring up our whites a touch, just add that pop. You can see that happening up here in the clouds. And then we will bring our blacks down just a bit. Now you can start seeing that contrast and those tones come out as we bring down our black levels. Negative 36-ish looks okay to me. Now, if we go ahead and we zoom in, I'm starting to like where this is going. We can hit backslash on the keyboard and see the before and the after, and we are already quite close to where we're going with this image. There is the after image. And here's where we're at right now. We're still a little bit heavy on the saturation. Let's go ahead and we'll bump up our clarity a tiny bit. Now this is just bringing out some of that mid-tone contrast detail you can see here in some of the white tones. You don't wanna take this too far. It starts looking a little grungy for my taste. So somewhere around, I'd say between 10 and 20 looks pretty good. Again, if you use too much clarity, it will start to really bring out the noise in your image, and we don't want a noisy image. So let's take our dehaze slider, and that's starting to look good. About, I'd say 30 looks pretty good. And we can again hit before and after by hitting backslash on the keyboard, and that's looking pretty good. Now let's start to play with our saturation and our vibrance. So I typically start with saturation. I will turn that down. Well, darn, that looks pretty good right there. And then maybe bring the vibrance down a touch. It's a little bit too much. Right around there, maybe minus 10. And then our saturation at minus 30. It's nice even numbers. I'm okay with that. I think that is looking pretty darn good so far. I think we're pretty close to how we want this look to look we're very close just some minor edits in the tones but we could absolutely stop right there if we wanted to i just want to go a little bit further specifically because we have some different hues as you can see when we look at these indoor shots we have some different hues in here that we'll end up playing with down here in our hsl so what we're going to do is we're going to call this good right now for our basic slider we're going to close this I really didn't do much to the tone curve here. We're gonna go down to our details tab and we're gonna add just a bit of sharpening, add a little bit of detail, and then a touch of masking. And again, as you may know, you can hold down Option or Alt on the keyboard and it will turn your image into a mask and you can see that the white areas are being sharpened, the black areas are not. And we don't need to over sharpen those clouds. So we can turn up our masking and avoid bringing out extra noise in our clouds. And that's looking pretty darn good. We have very sharp bricks and nice soft clouds. That looks pretty good. I think we're good for our details tab. There's not much noise, so I don't wanna soften this image anymore with noise reduction. Let's go ahead, let's close our detail tab and move on to our HSL sliders. So we have our HSL sliders open, as many of you know. This is one of my favorite tools in Lightroom. There's just so much you can do with it. You can do color grading, you can do some awesome looks with this, and I have some in-depth videos, including my 30 Days of Lightroom series. So if you're just learning Lightroom and you're just copying and pasting effects, 30 Days of Lightroom is a great way and a free way to hop right in to being a pro in Lightroom. And I will link to that down in the description. It's also available on my website at therunninggun.com and it's absolutely free. So let's talk about our 
HSL sliders. And what we're going to do with these is just ever so slightly move our reds over this way, away from the oranges. Same thing, move our oranges away from yellow. And kind of do this little bit of a wave here. When I edit just one and I crank just one slider, you'll start to see that some weird things start happening. I notice there's a lot more smooth transitions with hues when you do everything just kind of subtly in the same direction. But again, it all depends on the effect you're going for. So for this specific effect, this kind of a wave towards the left is pretty good. And we're going to do the exact opposite with saturation, where we bring up our blues and greens and a tiny bit of yellow and orange, but not too much. And we kind of leave our purples and then desaturate our reds a tiny bit, desaturate our magentas. And again, that subtle wave in, we're going to repeat this down here with our luminance by bringing up the luminance of our blues. You can see what we're doing here in the clouds. We don't want to bring it up too much. Bring it up a little bit, kind of play with those sliders a bit. Same thing, bring up the luminance of our greens and also play with, I think, yeah, we got to make sure greens aren't too saturated. So I'm going to bring those greens and yellows down just a little more. And this is all dependent on your image. You guys may have some slightly different values, but we're going to turn down our magentas, our purples, keep our blues. Yeah, we'll brighten our blues up a little more and kind of, again, create that same tonal curve and darken our reds a tiny bit. You'll notice some of the reds are pretty dark in the Harry Potter movies, and that looks pretty darn good. Go ahead, we will close, actually before we close this tab, we'll look at the before and after we brought out some blues and greens in that sky. Close that tab and let's go down to our effects tab and add just a little bit of a vignette. You can see our vignette really brings our focus towards the center, kind of darkens up the sky, darkens up the foreground and makes it really kind of stormy looking. And we'll bring that midpoint, let's see, Bring that towards the center a touch. Turn up our feathering. I think that looks pretty darn good. Let's turn it off before and after. And let's look at the before and after of this image. I think we're very close to being done. That is before, that is after. We have come a long way on this image. And let's take a look and see how close we are. We are pretty darn close. I may actually go up to our basic tab and turn down our vibrance a little bit more. So now we have nearly identical images. You can see the crop. I'll do a little adjustment and straighten out that horizon. And those look almost identical now. I think that looks pretty darn good. That is very close to our Harry Potter-esque vibes, kind of those Hogwarts tones that I was telling you guys about. And another important thing to remember is it really depends on the image that you start with. If I were to copy and paste this on an image of a sunny day, it's not really going to have the same feel. You can see we did have some cloudy overcast days when I was shooting these photos, and I also underexposed ever so slightly. So you can see the original here. There's the original photo, kind of dark and overcast. There are my edits. We'll take a look at some other ones. Here's kind of a wooded foresty area. There's a birch tree over there, some ivy. There's the before, and there's the after. And let's take a look at a couple more. I actually have some photos of this is St. Patrick's Cathedral. So. Here's the inside, there's the before, there's the after, and I really loved this spiral staircase. This really gave me some Harry Potter vibes. Here is kind of poking my camera through the staircase because we weren't allowed to go up it. There's the before, there's the after. We really punched the details. And again, same edits we made to the other ones. We just adjusted our exposure and our highlights when we got some really dark inside images. And again, 
another one of my favorites. There's the before and there's the after. And I'm thinking of throwing this into some sort of a Hogwarts Gryffindor Lightroom editing preset pack if you guys are interested. So let me know down below in the comments if you're interested in a preset pack for these dark grungy Hogwarts tones and I will definitely throw one of those together. Don't forget I'm putting my Patreon together soon and that will include free presets every month. And if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more editing videos, and until next time, get out and go shoot.